In this video, I'm showing you 22 beautiful chest traps in the Sicilian defense. We will cover all the variations, starting from the very popular Nidor, False and Khan, Dragon, Accelerated and Dragon, and also going to the sidelines like Alapid, Mora Gambit, and so on. Be ready to crush your opponent in few moves and big style. Uh, let's go! First of all, let's get to the Sicilian E4, C5, and now we see the Mora Gambit. Pawn take and C3. Why they sacrificing a pawn in order to lead the development? Black here decides not to play knight f6 immediately because there will be e5. And now this knight has no alternative than going back home. Reason why black plays here the move d6 in order to replay after bishop c4 with knight f6. But that's actually not so good because here there is still the move e5. And you guess like, ah, uh, I take. That's a terrible mistake because there is bishop takes with check. The king must take. And now, goodbye, my queen. That's all. Now we are ready for trap number two. D4 it starts in the same way. And now white plays knight f3. And now black might be a bit tricky with the move e5. The idea is that you are protecting this pawn. And if knight takes, boom, queen check. And this knight is gone. Of course, white is not going to take here the pawn. Instead, white plays the move c3. Going on with the idea of the Mora Gambit. After pawn take, we take back with the knight. Now black goes with the knight out. And white plays a normal but very strong move, bishop c4. And now black is in serious problem. There are so many ideas. I mean, queen d5, queen b3, knight g5. That's why you cannot play just the normal knight f6, because there is knight g5 in the style of the fried liver. And if d4 happens, you just take with the knight, you say thank you very much, and the white is really leading here. So in this position, it's hard to play a move. If h6 happens, then queen b3 is on the board attacking this point that cannot be easily protected. What black played here is move bishop e7. It seems like this bishop is covering this square, but actually there is the strong queen d5 threatening to take on f7, and this is a gg for white. One more time the Mora Gambit, but this time black is playing really good. After knight takes, we go with the knight on c6, knight f3, and we play the move e6, with the idea that the bishop on c4 is blocked. Queen c7, castle, we develop with the knight on f6, queen e2 is a normal move to support the pawn on e4, and now a very sneaky move, knight g4. You might say, okay, you're threatening mate, but there is the knight, you're not threatening anything. And many games are finishing after the move h3. It's a bad mistake because there is a surprise knight d4. Now, if knight takes, we know what happens. And if the queen moves anywhere, well, we are going to take on f3. The queen needs to take, and then we give mate. The reason why, in this position, the best move for white is knight b5. The idea is that you are attacking the queen, but you're also controlling this critical square. Reason why, after queen b8, you can play the move h3. Now knight d4 is no longer working, and black has the move h5, which leads to very complex positions. We are back to see the Mora Gambit for the white player. And now here we go with the move c3, pawn take. And now in this position, black plays another move, the move e5. Knight f3, we attacking the pawn, d6, and bishop c4. Easy, we are threatening g5 and I take f7. So black decides to play the move h6. Oh my god. Which is actually a bad move. Look, all the pieces are in the starting square. And this is a bad signal. Why does a strong move here and is bishop take f7. After king take, the other piece is getting sacrificed. But attention, you can't take because the queen is hanging. So the king needs to move somewhere. After king e8, there is queen check, king e7, and mate f7. Pan moves checkmate. Now we go with the sideline, the alapin. The idea is to push on d4 and take control over the center. One of the main resources for black is to attack immediately the center with the move d5. Pawn take, queen take, knight f3, normal development, and bishop g4 pinning this knight on f3. Now, white plays the normal bishop 2 with the idea that if bishop takes, you want to 
take back with the bishop. And now, you know, uh, black will play all the development moves like knight uh, f6, e6, bishop e7, knight c6. But you cannot do just whatever move because black here played the move e6 with a terrible mistake. Because after queen e5, this is a check and this bishop is lost. And you might ask, wait, but wasn't it already possible? No, because after queen a4, there is bishop back on d7. So the move e6 is cutting the way back for the bishop to cover the check. So be careful to do move order. This is not a pure alapin, but still there is the move c3. After knight f3, d6, c3, with the same idea of the alapin to push on d4. Uh, knight to c6, d4, and bishop g4 is played. This allows white to expand on the center with the move d5. Here black should go on b8, but you might say, knight e5 looks so good, but it's so bad. Because surprise, knight take e5, sacrificing the queen. But the bad news is that there is bishop b5. This looks like a checkmate. Well, it's not a checkmate because there is queen d2, but basically black needs to give back the queen. And after bishop takes, the king moves. And now white can win in so many ways. I think the easiest is just to take here, king takes, you take the bishop. And you will take at the next move also the rook. This game will not be at all an alapin. It goes with knight f3, d6, bishop c4, knight c6, d3, knight f6, and c3. So I put this in the alapin category, but it's not at all an alapin. Just because the idea is similar to play the move b4. Black played the standard move bishop g4 with the idea that after d4, you can take, pawn take, and now you take on f3. And you are forcing white to take with the pawn and create two weak pawns here. Because if queen takes, well, then this pawn is for free. So this is not good. But in this position, white is a very strong move. And this queen b3, attacking at the same time f7 and b7. Black needs to protect the most important point, playing e6. But now the pawn on b7 is falling, the knight is under attack, and only move for white is to play queen c8. But the problem are not over, because now there is bishop a6. If queen takes, bishop takes, and black loses a piece, so the move played by black is knight to e7. Now still white is playing super energetic with the move e5, and after pawn take, there is queen b5 check. Now the queen is under attack, so only move is to protect the queen. And now the last move of the game is knight take e5, attacking the queen, forcing the queen to take, but after bishop take, the king needs to move. And now goodbye, f7 pawn, goodbye rook, and goodbye game. Now we go in the Moscow variation, the canal attack. It starts with knight f3, d6, and now bishop b5. I love this variation, and it's pretty tricky. After knight e7, which is the most popular move at the moment, White plays the move d4, and after knight half 6 you just protect the pawn back with the knight on c3. Now the move played by black is a6, so you take on d7, knight takes, and you castle. After e6, bishop g5 is challenging the queen, the queen moves to c7, rook e1. You can see that white has all the pieces out, instead black is still struggling. Black took on d4, but this brings the knight in an even better position. And now the move played by black is the move h6. This stinks. Because now, look at those pieces. They are all still in the starting square. And this is no good. Here the move is knight take e6. And after pawn take, well, that's a mate. After g6. <laughs> it's time to get to the open Sicilia. Knight of 3, e6. We will see the poles and counters. Pawn takes, knight takes, and a6. We will flip the board and I played this opening when I started playing chess and I was so happy when my opponent played the normal move bishop f4. This gets a fork. You might say, whoa, 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 the pawn is hanging. Well, because there is check and the bishop is gone. That was pretty basic. Now we see something more advanced. Bishop d3 is the main move in this line. Knight f6, castle. And now black plays a standard move in the Sicilian, but a wrong move in this position, d5. That's way too early. You're opening the center and look, all your pieces are still in the starting square. That's no good. e5 attacking the knight. And now where is the knight going? The knight should actually go back home, but black plays knight f d7. This runs into serious trouble. Knight take e6. The idea that after pawn take, there is queen to h5. If g6... You take with the bishop and you're winning. So the move played is king e7. But here, after bishop g5, 
Knight here. One take. One take. There's the strong racial take of six. And if king takes, there's queen h5. And now this queen is gone forever. It's time to see the Sicilian with knight c6. This game is not the open Sicilian, but white goes with knight on c3. And after e5 with the move bishop c4, d6, d3. And now black plays bishop g4. This is so beautiful, but so well known in chess. H3, asking a question to this bishop. Where do you want to go? Do you want to take? Do you want to go back? Bishop goes back. And now the masterpiece. Knight take on e5. Must say, oh, the queen is hanging. But this runs in the most beautiful checkmate of the bishop take and knight here. Legal's mate. And now we're going the open Sicilian with knight on c6. d4 pawn take, knight takes. Here black plays the move e6 and after knight here a6. Bishop 2, queen c7, bishop e3, b5, a3 blocking, avoiding the move b4, bishop e7, castle, and now... The move played is knight g e7. That's actually a mistake. And the reason is knight takes b5. This is a complete disaster. After pawn take, there is knight takes. The queen needs to move. There is a check on d6. The king needs to move. We take here. We will take the rook. And that's over. One more time. We see the time on variation now. After knight takes, queen c7, knight c3, and e6. This is the time on White plays the move g3 with the idea to go with a fianchetto and to castle. And this bishop is controlling the critical square on d5. Black plays the move bishop to b4, wanting to pin this knight. This allows white to play knight b5. The queen needs to move and now the challenging move a3. Where are you going with the bishop? You need to keep the d6 square under control, so you need to go back in this diagonal. Black wants to keep the bishop active on c5 but that's actually bad because there is bishop f4 now the queen is under attack and how do you stop you have just two options either you play e5 or you play knight e5 if you play e5 this square will be weak forever reason why black decides to go with the knight on e5 with the idea to kick this knight away and then to play the move b6 but you white as an incredible move knight to d5 this looks like a free knight but after pawn take the queen is coming here and now those two pieces are both under attack that's very bad that's why black plays here the move f6 just protecting this piece one more time but well that's also a catastrophe because there is knight c7 and here after king f8 white is first thing kicking this bishop back and then takes the rook after queen take just bishop g2 ready to castle and white wins the game let's go to another Sicilian, richard rouser it goes with d6 d4 pawn take knight takes knight f6 knight c3 and knight f6 this is the starting position now white plays the very strong bishop g5 and black sees immediately the opportunity to play queen b6 with the idea of attacking this knight and the weak pawn on b2 bishop e3 is played and now black is greedy takes the pawn but you need to be careful when taking those pawns there is knight b5 threatening this check on c7 queen b4 is played with the idea that if you give a check the king is just moving away and if you take here well this knight is gone and also this knight will not have a fun time that's why here white plays the move bishop d2 and now we are ready to give a check here on c7 black takes the free pawn on e4 and that's again a blunder the idea is that after knight c7 there is the same idea as before king moves you take the knight and then this knight is falling but white is here silent move and also so strong the move is a3 just an additional information black here is the famous grandmaster from georgia jobava a very strong super grandmaster and here the queen doesn't have many square how do you keep this knight protected there is no way the only way to go is with knight takes the six attacking this queen but this loses for some tactical reason after knight x 3 there is knight c7 check king moves now we take the queen knight takes we take the rook and after the knight tries to escape there is not a long way because bishop c3 is sealing the deal the knight will fall and white will be at least one exchange up we're again in this richer rouser and now white is playing again the strong bishop g5 but black doesn't go with the queen on b6 but goes with the move e6 
much more solid approach. Queen e2, bishop e7, knight b3, solid, just going with the knight back, castle, and now opposite side castling, going for a very sharp position. Queen b6, and now white sees the opportunity to win a pawn. After bishop take, bishop takes, this pawn is hanging, but there is a problem because this pawn on f2 is also hanging, and here white gets too greedy, playing the move knight i4. The queen goes back, and now bishop take f6, bishop take f6, the queen is no longer attacking the pawn on f2, and so white thinks that here is winning a pawn. But that's not it, because now there is bishop g5 giving a check, a very nice check, because after king b1, there is rook d8. And now you might say, oh, I can take a queen. Yeah, you can, but that's mate. Now we go to a very popular variation, the accelerated dragon. After knight f3, black's place g6. E4, pawn take, knight takes, bishop g7, knight c3, knight c6, bishop e3, knight f6, f3, castle, and bishop c4. Now, this variation with f3 is no longer considered too accurate because black has a strong queen b6. You might say, okay, what's the threat? Well, to take on b2, but white doesn't really care and plays the move queen e2. The idea is that, yeah, you can take there, but after rook b1, Queen is three, knight b5, this queen is not having a fun time. But black here has a very beautiful move that wins just a pawn, but that's enough to be an opening success, is knight take e4. The point is that you're attacking this queen, and now this knight is hanging. So after f take e4, you're taking here, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, knight takes, and black is already having an extra pawn, after castle, we can go back with the knight, and if knight e5, we can just move the king away, and then black has this endgame, extra pawn, black is better, and might probably win. Again, accelerated dragon, but white goes for a more solid line with c3, with idea of preparing d4. Black now <laughs> goes for a double fianchetto with the move d6, and after d4, bishop on b7, hitting at the pawn on e4. White doesn't really care about protecting the pawn and plays bishop c4, with the idea that if the bishop takes, there is knight g5 attacking this and this point. That's not what black was looking forward. After bishop c4, the move played is e5, striking immediately at the center. If pawn take, bishop takes, and then if bishop takes, queen takes, black says, I'm fine, I'm going to go out with the bishop, with the knight, castle, and I should have a fine position, but there is a problem. After bishop takes, there is the strong queen a4, exploiting the fact that this king is vulnerable. Now, if bishop goes back, you might say, oh, there is no problem, but the shocking move, knight e5, with that yet after bishop takes his mate so taking the queen is now possible and this bishop is under attack queen c7 is the only move to protect the piece but the piece is still lost because after knight takes c6 if you take with the queen there is bishop b5 and if you take with the knight there is the move d5 and white wins this game doesn't start in a conventional way but we reach the same position of the accelerated dragon after c4 knight f6 knight bc3 black plays the move g6 b4, c take, pawn take, and b6. Now white has a marks a structure, controlling very well the square on d5, and this is considered a very solid setup. White is protecting the pawn on e4 with the move f3s, preparing bishop on e3. Black sees the idea and plays queen b6, with the idea of avoiding this bishop to move out because this pawn would be hanging. But I doesn't care and play bishop e3 no matter what, development is more important. After queen take b2, black is not really having a fun time. Knight a4, the queen cannot go here, cannot go here, cannot take, cannot go here, cannot go there. Only square would be on a3 or on b4. We will see later what happens if queen b4, because after queen a3, white is playing bishop c1, actually forcing the queen to go to b4. And now bishop d2 is played. The queen needs to go back to e3. After knight b5, it's over for the queen. It is for white. Again, we are in one of the main line of the accelerated dragon. And now, this is one of the few Sicilian where white shouldn't play the so-called English attack. It goes with f3, queen d2, long castle, and then white starts to push all the pawns and attack the king that will be castled on the king side. But again, it's not so good. And after f3, castle, queen d2, Black can already play the strong move d5, going immediately for the center. 
after long hustle, the pawn at the center is taken. Wait, expect, but now there is knight g5. Black wants to get rid of this strong bishop. I say, okay, no problem, I can keep it. But that would be a very bad mistake. Let's flip the board, black to move. We take on d4, and after bishop take d4, we have bishop h6. And now, that's the end. Because the queen and the king are both on the same diagonal. From the accelerated dragon, we go to the pure dragon. With d4 pawn take, knight takes, knight of 6, knight c3, g6, bishop e3. White's idea is to play f3, queen d2, long castle, and to push a baby attack towards the king side. Based on why, black plays the move knight g4 here. And the idea is that you want to get rid of this very strong bishop. That's a big mistake. Because after bishop e5, this is a check. If you play knight c6, we take, pawn take give a check we are winning this rook that's very bad for black and if bishop d7 that's a free piece thank you very much ggs let's go to a more advanced trap after g6 white plays another plan bishop e2 and after bishop g7 bishop e2 knight c6 and f4 fighting for the center queen b6 is a typical move hitting at this knight and the pawn on b2 problem is that white has now a very beautiful move e5 this move forced the knight to retreat somewhere but if you dare to take this pawn that seems free but it's not free after d take if i white has a strong move and this knight takes e6 you say what well if you take here that's made my friend and if you take this knight that's goodbye to your queen. Now white is going for a very direct approach, f4. And this is tricky because the most natural move, bishop g7, is a mistake. There is immediately e5, super strong. If you take this pawn, that's already lots of trouble. After pawn take, the knight needs to move and is going towards the center on d5. That's active, but it's problematic because bishop b5 forces black to move this king away you cannot cover with bishop here because this knight is just falling and after bishop takes you take with the knight and the queen is now protecting this knight as well so after bishop b5 king f8 is the move played now castle is a normal and super strong move the rook is hitting at this pawn and the beauty is not yet over because after knight takes his three we don't take back but we go for a checkmate knight b6 that's beautiful if you take with the bishop queen takes and it's mate and if the king moves well that's mate in one more move it's time for us to approach the most popular variation in the sicilian defense the knight of d6 d4 pawn take knight takes knight of six now white plays a sideline the move f3 the idea is that white would like to delay knight c3 in order to play c4 first. Black plays the move e5 and now white doesn't want to retreat that knight. So gives a check first, bishop d7, takes, knight takes and knight f5. And this knight seems very active attacking the pawn on d6. The problem is that there is the move d5 immediately. And after pawn take, knight b6. Now there is really no way to protect this pawn. Or is there? c4 is the move that white plays with the idea that after knight takes there is queen check and we are taking the knight the problem is that there is queen d7 and after you take the knight first of all i could take yours but there is even better rook c8 oh my god there is no way to protect this bishop and black is completely winning Let's go to the actual knight of this game is between two grandmaster knight c6 pawn take knight takes and a6 now white plays bishop c4 e6 is a normal move in order to limitate the action of this powerful bishop bishop b3 e5 bishop g5 bishop e7 this is just a normal way to develop the pieces knight f3 queen c7 long castle short castle this short castle is a mistake because you would have had played the move bishop e7. So you can imagine what happens after castle. Yes, e5. You might say, okay, this rook is under attack. This knight is under attack, but black can just play bishop b7. Black is attacking the queen and then in the next move will take care of the knight. No, because white is taking here. And after bishop takes, White is taking even on e7, attacking this. You might say, wait, but you are taking two pieces. I took a queen, now I'm going to take a rook. I mean, are you crazy? No, white is not crazy because there is knight take e7. And this basically ends the game. If you move the queen, the 
pawn is taking here and now the pawn is protected by the knight. So queen take e7 is actually the only move. If you take here, there is bishop takes, you move the king and that's mate. And after queen take e7, bishop takes, rook e8 and now there is knight c7. Two rooks are under attack and the white is winning. We are again in the knight for white plays the move f4, again very aggressive towards the center. Now black needs always to watch out for the move e5, so plays queen e7, controlling that square. Knight f3 is exactly a move that goes back with the knight, but wants to prepare the push on e5. Black doesn't care and play the move g6. But now, white's idea can be played. e5, white can extend the center, pawn take, pawn take. This knight needs to move out and goes to d7. And after knight d5, white gets really lots of space. The queen goes back home. Look how many pieces are in the starting square. Bishop g5 is a very strong move, just blocking this bishop to go out because e7 would be hanging. For some white, it's not so easy to play here for black. Knight c6 would be a normal good move, but black tried to exchange as many pieces as possible with the move knight b6. Problem is that really you're lacking development. So sometimes there might be some incredible tactic. And here we are. Knight of six. Pawn take. Queen takes. King takes. And we take here in F6. And goodbye, Rook. Bye. Take care. I can't believe that we have reached the end of this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. It's really important. I hope you enjoyed these traps. And let me know in the comments. See you next time. Bye.